people often ask, what am I doing with my brush and my water? So when you have a clean brush, um, you get nice clean watercolors. So notice that I tap my water off and pull the brush over this way. And this helps me control the amount of water in my brush. So, if I'm going to use a new color, um, let's say red, I don't have an excessive amount of water in my, my brush, so I can control the paint. And this, this is a nice milky mix of red there. Also notice that I use the side of my brush. Now if I want to paint a new color, I need to go into my water, pull off some of that, um, check and make sure that I've gotten all that color out. There we go. And now I can use some yellow. And it's nice, fresh, beautiful yellow in a wa kind of a milky mix. And I will put that color down. Now I'm rinsing out my brush. Sometimes if you take it along the edge, it helps get rid of some of the color. Making sure I've got all the color out of that go back into the water, lose some of it on the side of your bucket, and now I'll paint blue. So I've got a nice milky mix of blue. And you may decide, oh, I want a little bit more water there. Okay, so here's, here's my blue square. So that's the main thing that you want to pay attention when you are putting your brush in the water and changing colors. The clear, clearly getting the color off of the brush, going back in, and well, it's kind of fun to pick different colors. How about green? Make a nice milky mix. And there we go. So that's how I can control um, the amount of water in my brush. If I start with a milky mix, then I can decide, oh, do I want to water it down, possibly, and have it get thinner, then I can get a lighter value out of that. Now, notice there's a lot of water in there. It's too much. So what do I do? I squeeze the water out and then I of the brush, and then I use the brush to pull up some of that water. Let's say I want to go a little darker than what I've got. There you go. So the amount of water to the amount of paint is going to make a difference. Now, if I've got too much water, Remember, I can lose some of that paint on my paper towel. And yeah, I'm getting some nice variety out of that. Um, let's add a little more blue. Hmm. A little more water to the blue, and I can get a, a lighter blue. Rinse out my brush, add a little more water to my yellow, there we go. So I can go back and forth between all those colors and still have nice clean watercolor. See I'm adding more water to the red. There, so hopefully that helps you see 
on how I work with my water. and how I work with the paint. Now let's say I want to stir these up together. You know, I can do that right here. And create an orange, which is quite nice. Or let's rinse out my brush and maybe a green with the blue and yellow. So the more you paint, the more you um, will become familiar with this process of dipping your brush in the water, tapping it on the side, and wiping it off so that you've got a very clean brush in between. Now when this gets wet, um, it's not good for you to be holding a wet paper towel. So I, ten I tend to move it around so I can use all sides of it. And then when I'm finished, and I've used all, you know, all the dry area, I can just set it aside and it'll dry and I can use it again tomorrow. So um, often in my, you know, I have a basket full of old used paper towels and I can use them again and again. So don't feel like you're um, wasting all this, all the, don't feel like you're wasting all these um, paper towels. Um, another thing you can do is use something like this to wipe your brush off in between colors. Uh, and that works very well. It's just a placemat from the drugstore or the dollar store. And here you can see where, you know, I've rinsed out, cleaned off my brush, and gone back in. I've just found that sometimes I need the control that I can get with the paper towel or a handy wipe to um, balance the amount of water in my brush. So there's a very simple explanation of what I'm doing with my water bucket and my brush and the paints. Um, hope that helps. Uh, I used a Holbein watercolor spray bottle to spray my colors at the beginning and Anytime you're in the middle of, of painting and you want to charge up your colors, just, just spray them and they are so ready for you. Otherwise, if they're completely dry, you're spending a little bit more time trying to get the paint out of that, that area. But by, by spraying them with, the, um, with a spray bottle, you'll, you'll get those colors coming to life a lot quicker. There. Thanks to Will for asking me to do this. We, we did it in a webinar and um, I think it really deserves to be in the module one with all the other um, how to simple how to's that will be in all of my videos. There we go. Oh, and this, this is my water bucket, so you can see it a little bit better. If I tip it too much, the water is going to come out. But I like, I like to buy these pitchers when I'm traveling and um, bring them home. And in my studio classes, here we use a variety of my pitchers from all over the world. So that, that's what I collect when I'm on my painting trips whenever I find something that that deserves to be in the group. So anyway, thank you very much and we'll see what comes next.